Welcome back friends, Sunday morning on the homestead. Man, I'm sore after that big old ride. I was, uh, I was just posted that video up today and uh, Jack and I are getting ready to uh, do the, get back to the timber framing in the garden and I'm telling him, man, you're gonna have to carry the load today. I don't think there's a muscle in my body that's not sore. Uh, I'm feeling a bit of a rant today. I don't know where this is gonna go, but what I can promise you is that there won't be any jump cuts. You know what jump cuts are? Jump cuts are, there's some YouTube creators, Philip DeFranco comes to mind, perfect example. I remember watching one of his videos uh, sometime back and it was like a, a five or six minute video and there were nearly 30 jump cuts in the video. A jump cut is when you uh, can't think of what to say or you don't trust yourself, uh, so you cut it and then you rethink and then you say it and you splice it all together, right? I never trust anyone that does jump cuts because that what that tells me is that that's probably not an honest man. An honest man could just turn on the camera or come to you and just speak his heart or speak his mind um, and doesn't have to, even if it's disorganized or even if you don't remember all your points, but you can get, usually get the point across. When you watch someone that's jump cutting, um, that's someone that's very, uh, well, I think manip manipulative um, and not necessarily uh, a super honest person or sincere. So, a uh, bit of a rant today. So a couple, a couple things. I was reading through the comments on the dirt biking thing and it always gets my goat because uh, it seems to bring out all of the experts. And I know you guys tell me all the time, oh, you know, don't feed the trolls, don't feed the trolls. But I, I want to I talk about it. Uh, you know, one guy comes on and he's like, oh, well, you know, I think he said something about such amateurs, you know, I, I, what I would do or, or you know, I would, I would just, I would crush that thing, right? <laughs> and I was writing back, I'm like, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. So I, Again, I have never professed to be an expert at, at, at the majority of things that I do. I'm just, I'm just a person that has a short attention span, and, and, I, and I like to live life, and I like to try new things, right? And if they don't work for me, or if I, I get tired of them, then I move on. But I, I, I'm not an expert dirt bike rider. For goodness sakes, uh, Ray and I uh, uh, bought bikes last year. We just started. I'm 50. So not a lot. I mean, I started kiteboarding last year. You know, I'm not afraid to fail and I'm never going to be the, the best guy, but I enjoy living life and I, and I like experiencing things and having things to look forward to. And, and I admire other people like that. That's why I, I have such a good friendship with Ray, why we're so compatible. He is one of the strongest men I've ever known. Uh, he's a, a, a man of strong faith. He's a man of character. He is a guy that I could trust 100% absolutely. You want to know who your friends are? You can ask yourself this question. If I was seven hours away from home and I was in trouble, and I broke down in the middle of a rainstorm or whatever, who could I call right there in that moment that would drop everything and would come and help me no matter what? Who, how many friends could do that? But the most important thing is this, and then wouldn't hold it over your head like you owed them something. Well, that narrows the list, doesn't it? That, 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 that brings your friends down to probably you can count them on one hand. And Ray is one of those guys. Um, and you find out, my granddad always said, you can find out what type of guy you're working with or what type of guy you have or your friends with. Just take him hunting for two weeks and uh, see him at his worst. See him exhausted at the bottom of a canyon. See him hungry. See him frustrated and the true man is going to come out and you're going to you're going to know your character. I'll have to tell you the story about the Br'er Rabbit molasses sometime. Uh, so uh, yeah, so again, we shared, I wasn't going to do a video on this. You know, my dirt biking I, is kind of that's why, you know, we've not done anything with sponsors. I could have got free motorcycles. For, I could have picked up the phone and, and called a variety of different companies. I've been offered. And th that's something that we keep to ourselves. Jack and I and, and our friends, when we ride, most of the time you guys don't even see it. But it was just a fun experience. And the fact that we were going in there for the first time because we would got there at the right time and the snow was melting. I had my phone on me and we just put some clips together and, and you just saw a fraction of that trail. But uh, to all you experts, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I mean, Ray and I got up off the couch and we went and did, what, 60 miles, hard miles. And if you haven't, haven't been on a, a winding, screaming dirt bike uh, for 9 or 10 hours over hard ground like that, you don't know what tired and what difficult and hard and exhausting is. As a former mountain biker, I don't do it as much as I used to, but I used to be really into it. I can tell you the truth that those big loops on the dirt bike are more physically taxing and mentally taxing on the dirt bike. Uh, than they are on the mountain bike. And when you are, at the end of the day, when you're done, you're way more wrecked uh, physically and mentally on those motorcycles than you are on the pedal bikes. Uh, no question about it. I'll give you an example. That trail that I shared with you guys on there, and the people have asked me that to 
where it's at. I'm not going to tell you where it's at. <laughs> if you want to find it, you'll have to find it on your own. Um, but uh, I have a friend. How much of this can I share? I've got to keep it kind of vague. So do you know who the British SAS are? The British SAS, uh, this is the Secret Air Service, are a, a tier one special forces group, the best that the British Army has. These guys are tough. Um, I heard someone say that you can give them a tube of toothpaste and a half a bottle of tepid water and they can survive in the worst environment for a month. You know, that, you know, we know what you're talking about. So these guys use motorcycles, dirt bikes particular, in their, um, uh, I guess, in their war fighting. They contacted um, a friend of mine, um, and they flew their bikes out here. This was a few years ago, uh, uh, to do some training on the very trails that I was showing you today. Um, and I have a, a good friend, a riding partner, that was actually there as one of the kind of one of the helpers, you know, mechanics to make sure everything went on because it's it's a it's a difficult environment. It's very dangerous up there, right? Or can be. And I'll tell you what, these hardcore British SAS guys. Um, it took, it pushed them to their absolute limit just getting through this. And a couple of them, uh, spiraled and melted down mentally and were not able to complete the thing with the group. And my buddy had to kind of keep encouraging them and shepherd them along to get them through this ride. Just to give you a little idea on how physically taxing this is. I, as I said in the comments, I would love, it would be one of the most poetically it would be one of the most beautiful things in the world to gather up these braggers in the comments with all these mad skills, these motocross guys, right? Uh, and I would love to take them out there. I'd love to take them out there and do about a 100-mile loop, maybe a 90-mile loop on hard ground uh, and see with their bikes, with all their awesomeness and their pro moves and their supernatural endurance and all these things, I would love to video that and to share that with you guys. Uh, that would be awesome. <laughs> because uh, it wouldn't happen. If the British SAS bring their own motorcycles and, and they have they struggle with it and some of them melt down and, and can't really compete complete it without help, uh, that says a lot, right? So that makes me double proud of our boys. Our boys, Ray's boy, Tyler, and Jack, are riding these things. They were riding them last year at 12 and 13. So... Um, yeah. Oh, I wish. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't you love to see that video? We could get them out there. Uh, it would just be awesome. And I'm not saying that I'm the super awesome guy. What I'm saying is, is, is that uh, at Ray and I, we have perseverance and we have uh, uh, teamwork and we work together and we don't quit. We don't quit. That's the most thing. There's we're not the fastest. We're not the best. We have to help one another through these things. It requires both of us to complete it. But man, we have a good time and it's an adventure. <laughs> Somebody wrote, oh my, Arkansas Pilgrim wrote, uh, so what does Mrs. W think about, you know, when she watches these videos? And I, I shared that video with her, I think it was yesterday. And she was muttering something about life insurance, and then she, I don't think she got through all the way through the, through the video. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm I'm, I'm kind of ranting here, but I just wanted to talk about that. And you know, I guess also while we're here, uh, while we're ranting on the alcohol thing, you know, the other comments that kind of get my goat is, you know, I've been completely honest with you guys on that, and and uh, I've, and I. Um, for me, you know, abstaining from it is a is a better choice. And it almost it, I almost get the impression and I get so many guys that are commenting, well, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with with a Christian having a drink or there's nothing wrong with having a beer or wine with a meal. I never said that. I never said that and I don't judge anyone. I'm simply talking about myself and I think that a lot of you guys are relating to that because I know how many of you are emailing me and telling me how much better your life is now that you've abstained from it and went without. I'm talking about myself. I, I don't have any judgment on you. And I agree with you 100%. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And I'm not saying that I won't ever partake in it again. What I'm saying is that for me personally, uh, it's better and my quality of life is better and, and my the way that I interact with my family and what I get done. And I'm a good grief, I'm learning to play the piano because I don't drink anymore and I'm not sitting in front of my computer on YouTube videos in a, in a half a stupor because I just drank three beers. That's all I'm saying. It's not, it's got no judgment. And if you can do that, and if you're not a person of extremes like I am, I mean, everything I seem to take to extreme and that, that could be drinking or that could be, you know, what, whatever. So it just depends. And I do envy someone that can just take it or leave it. Um, me, man, once it gets going and, and I'm around my friends and the beers start cracking, you know, I'm, you know how it goes, right? So for me, it's just a personal thing. And I don't, um, I don't look down on anyone else uh, for doing that. Uh, but I, I just, I'm, a, I'm, I'm excited. I don't, 
I don't. I guess I do know why. I, I woke up excited this morning, and and I and it seems like every morning, uh, maybe it's the nice weather, the summer, because you know when it was when the weather was really getting bad and sl and summer was slow getting here. I I did a video on it. I just felt this sense of depression, and it's just so it's gone now. And it may be it may be part partly because of giving up the alcohol. Um, it may be just that the weather's changed and, and I was just, it was just gloomy being inside and, and the rain and the gray and all that time. But I'm just, I feel, I feel something big's going to happen in this country and I don't think it's going to be bad. I, I just, I, I feel, I see guys, uh, standing up for truth. Um, you know, I keep referencing, referencing Owen Benjamin and, uh, I, uh, I, I admire him so much. He has the courage of a lion. Uh, and guys will go on there and I hear from you like, oh, wait a minute, what are you talking about? He's talking about this and he's, he's talking about this and I don't like his language. It, well, if you can't see past that, if you can't get in there and see the message, uh, I, I can understand where you're coming from. But when you take a guy that is willing to give up everything uh, and stand up for truth and for family and for God and for justice... Um, at his own expense, and to have that show that sort of courage, that drew my attention. It drew, draws my attention, and, and I see it also encouraging not only myself but other men and standing up and and wait and finally saying, you know what? No, we're not going to accept all of this stuff that you're you're forcing upon us. We're not going to ex accept these perverted lifestyles. We're not going to accept you tearing apart our family in our country and stealing our rights away. I feel people are finally pushing back. Um, and men are starting to get courage and it's exciting. It's exciting what's going to happen and it's exciting. I think a, a I'm not going to say a revolution, what is it? a renaissance. I think a renaissance to this country is coming where people are finally getting fed up and, and have had enough, enough censorship, enough propaganda, enough telling us that we're bad, telling us that we're wrong, telling us that it's wrong to, to stay home and raise your kids and to have family and to grow your own food and, and to homeschool your own kids. It's, it's people are waking up to it and it's exciting and it's encouraging. And I, I feel like channels like myself, um, uh, channels like Owens, um, there's lots of them out there are at the tip of the spear and guys are, are starting to come together and to wake up and to do these things and to, and to have this have this excitement for life instead of this doom and gloom. Because if you watch the media and, and you, and I just remember being so angry, it's like, oh, those politicians and AOC and this and that, and, and, and they're just destroying the country. I'm getting to the point now, it's like, well, let's just put, just ignore them. Let's, let's do a pivot and let's, let's just keep going forward and let's look forward to the coming of Christ and let's occupy until he comes and let's enjoy life. So what you're 50? So what you uh, have a drinking problem? You know, quit it, <laughs> give it up, take up new hobbies and, and look forward to uh, just look forward to to the remaining years you have. I I I was thinking as I was turning on the camera, I am 50, 50 now. What am I doing out there, dirt biking and and trying to learn kiteboarding and all these crazy things? I, I'm having a good time and I'm I'm having fun and I and this world as we know it, um, I'm not going to experience it for very much longer. And when when I'm in the kingdom with God and I'm experiencing new things, I, I don't want to have the regret that. Um, that when I look back that I didn't take live it to the fullest and take advantage of life and and, and to be excited about things why, why be in fear why be worried about why be in depression when there's so much excitement and there's so much work to be done I think the reason why I found myself getting in depression because I wasn't doing the work I wasn't moving the message forward I wasn't standing up courageously for Christ and and for family and for all the things that were so important to me and it took guys like like Owen and, and others to to kind of get me out of that stupor and, and to get me you know get me going in the right way and and uh, I'm, I'm just excited I don't even know what I'm talking about right now but something is happening in this country and it's good Christ is coming Christ is opening up truths to people uh, that we didn't know Christ is giving courage and, and putting a lion's heart in men uh, willing to stand up even at the risk of, of losing everything uh, to stand up for truth. And those men are going to be rewarded uh, and, and not only in this world but in the world to come. So uh, don't be afraid. Don't, don't uh, be discouraged. Um, do what you can where you are. Stand for truth and push back. When something is wrong, look at it. Not how you... You've been, you've been told to look at it, look at it how it is and put your foot down and just say, no, no, that's not right. I'm not going to stand to that for that, even against family members. And if you are alienated from them and if you're alienated from coworkers for standing for truth and for standing for Christ, you know what? So what? As he said, shake the dust off your feet. 
turn your back on them, walk away, and still start walking towards truth because Jesus is coming and uh, the goats will be separated from the sheep. And uh, which side do you want to be on? Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll bring the camera in and we'll get Mrs. W's garden boxes in here and film that. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.